My name is Max Walker. I'm the founder and CEO of a company based out of Saratoga Springs, New York called Windrush. We are a data visualization company uh, specializing in serving companies in the finance space. So we're a business to business company. We don't sell to you, we don't sell to your grandma, we sell to really big multinational companies. And we help them turn their data into meaningful stories. Uh, so let's talk about uh, what that means. So most financial data, and I'll broaden this up for the audience and say most data in general is stored in Excel spreadsheets, which is crazy, right? We're, you know, most people here are data professionals, you're thinking about SQL databases and Hadoop clusters and all these other cool technologies that we all get to play with. But most data isn't places like that. Most data is on a file on someone's 25-year-old laptop. It's gonna explode at some point. Um, and analysts that work with this data are unwilling to move to new tools, right? It's way too hard to switch over to whatever random buzzword we all think is really cool right now um, for real reasons and false reasons and crazy reasons. Um, they're just not gonna change. So what we know they actually want is intuitive user interfaces, simple customization, and powerful sort of intuitive tailored expectations of what that data means, right? So we want users want to be able to point and click. They want to be able to make the data tell a story in a format that makes sense for their organization, right? It doesn't want to all be red or all be blue if your organization uses the opposite color. And Ideally, they wanted to do it for them, right? Like, isn't that the, the ultimate version of, of a powerful tool for your job is you don't do anything, the tool does the job for you. Um, and these things, by and large, don't exist today, right? You might get one, maybe two of these things a little bit in certain products. Um, although intuitive user interfaces, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say there are no data visualization tools that have anything bordering on an intuitive user interface. Um, but we'd rather have analysts focusing on analysis, right? That's what they're being paid to do. That's what they know how to do. They're not supposed to be typing experts. They're supposed to be analysis experts. And so what we've actually built is a product to solve this problem. And we're attacking it from a pretty interesting angle. So we've basically built an interactive, live updating, data storytelling tool that embeds directly into an Excel-based workflow. So we can pull data in from anywhere. We can pull it in from the fancy big data stores that you're talking about. We can pull it in from SQL databases, but we can actually also pull it in from an Excel spreadsheet, which is, spoiler alert, going back to my previous slide, where almost all of it is right now. And we allow people to build interactive charts from that data. So if, I'm sure everyone in the audience used Excel, but raise your hand if you used Excel. Very nice. And when you select data and you click a button and you go through the wizard thing, what do you, what do you get out of that? It's not really a chart, it's a picture of a chart, right? Like it's, a, it's like basically a screenshot. It's a static sort of dead piece of information. Um, and it doesn't easily change and it's not interactive in any way. Um, well, that's not true anymore. The R plugin drops right in, you can build interactive live updating charts. You click on things, you zoom in, you click on other things, you zoom out, you can change assumptions within the chart. Um, and then you can centralize it all in one place because when I'm talking about this world where spreadsheets are sitting on people's desktops, when their laptop does eventually explode, um, there's this huge problem where that data is just missing now. Um, and not only that, but there's obviously collaboration going on. There's 27 different people in a financial organization that are trying to value Apple as a company. Why are they doing it 27 different times rather than just sharing those models between them? So we've built that in as well. So basically a way for the data to become centralized and managed. Um, this is a pretty technical audience, so the, the sort of more technical version of that pitch is uh, we basically have a series of ETL plugins to dump data into a data lake or data warehousing solution. Um, we have an off-the-shelf one that we provide. We can plug into existing ones like uh, Kafka or, or um, Cassandra or whatever. Um, but do that from an interface that the end user who is not, doesn't even know what those things mean, they feel like they're just using the product that they know and love and they've used before. Um, but what's actually happening is all their data is being centralized and managed in a place where their organization can say, that guy left and went off to go find himself in the Rocky Mountains somewhere. Um, all of his financial models did not disappear into the ether with him, um, which is a huge deal for these organizations. And this is where stuff gets really exciting. So we're talking not only about helping people work with big data, we're also talking about actually using the data that they work with to make working with the data better. It's a mouthful, right? You're like one of those pictures of the snake that's eating its own tail. Um, or, or Boros, I can't pronounce it. Ouroboros, or, or, or battle. It's got a lot of vowels. It's got way too many vowels for a normal word. Um, so basically what's happening is as data gets ingested into the system, 
the system actually gets smarter about what that data is, right? Somebody comes in and they say, uh, this is actually stock ticker information for this publicly traded company. Uh, the system now has one data point that says data that looks like this may be stock ticker information for a publicly traded company. And individually, those things are statistical averages that don't mean a whole lot. Over huge amounts of data being ingested, those things are virtual certainties, right? You're dealing with 99.9% .9 of the data as it comes in without real intervention, right? You can say, uh, when an analyst gets an M&A valuation, they make a chart that looks like this, which incidentally is incredibly annoying to make in Excel. Um, it's called a football field valuation. But almost all the time, that's what they're making. And the, actually, our software actually knows that and can just do it for them. But nobody told the software that, right? The software figured it out from watching analysts build these kinds of charts over and over and over again. And if you ask, if anyone in your family or circle of friends and acquaintances works as an investment banker, especially right out of school, ask them about building those charts and then see the look on their face because it's like you know, a Vietnam flashback. It's not good. Um, so let's talk about how this actually happens in the real world. Because like all of, I've been saying we do all this crazy stuff and it's, it's sort of not very convincing, especially if you understand how hard it is to work with data, which we all should. Um, so we, over the summer, we worked with um, a company called Barclays. They're a, a small 175,000-person, uh, 380-year-old investment bank uh, based out of London. Um, operate across four continents. Uh, do stuff that hopefully doesn't crash world economies all the time. Um, and they needed a way to solve this problem, right? They have employed huge amounts of people whose job it is to go into Excel and turn data into charts. And because of the real realities of the industry they work in, they employ lots of people in New York City, paying them six-figure salaries for kids that just came out of school to sit in Excel and copy and paste stuff back and forth over and over and over again, which is really terrible for them and actually also really terrible for those people because even though they're making a lot of money, they all hate it because it's a miserable job. Um, so what they wanted to do is basically inter uh, implement Windrush's interactive charting tool. So they, there's this group called Equities Research. I'm not going to get into a how an investment bank works, because I'm still not sure I understand it, and it's really, really boring. Um, but there are people that basically make recommendations about equities, and they needed a way to turn data into interactive stories that could be presented to both other financial professionals, but also lay people, people like you and I, who have no idea what half these metrics mean, in a compelling and interesting way. So we basically implemented our technology there uh, in this pilot program, uh, through, uh, we were a Techstars company. I don't know if anyone knows what Techstars is, but it's basically a venture accelerator, um, one of the biggest venture accelerators in the world. Um, they have a partnership with Barclays, which we worked with. Um, and we basically helped them build interactive and engaging content. And you know, we don't have to build that ourselves, right? We gave them a tool to do it. We gave a tool that would empower these people that were previously sitting there at an Excel spreadsheet, weeping softly and curled up under their desk, um, to actually make really cool stuff that they can both be proud of and also it's done way faster and it's way easier and it's way better, right? Um, so this is the part where I talk about the actual company and none of you guys are investors and also I've been doing this long enough that I know that I couldn't say, you should give us money, which is what people always do with these pitches. Um, but you can't, don't do that. Yeah. So the question was, what's the difference between what we're doing and traditional dashboarding software? So software products people might be familiar with in the audience are like Tableau, Spotfire, ClickView, uh, Splunk, there's a thousand of them. Um, most of them are really miserable. Um, but that's not why we're better. We're not just a better dashboarding product. Every dashboarding product is just a better dashboarding product. Um, we're not really about dashboarding, right? There's some really interesting lessons to learn from dashboarding, which have to do with uh, the fact that interactive and live updating data, fresh data, are far more valuable than almost any other product feature that you can have. Um, so we, we stole those, because those are really smart things to do. Um, and then we basically allow people to build reports instead of dashboards. So when you think about a dashboard, you think about 27 charts on a page that if you're a, a data professional, like hopefully all of us in this room are, you look at that and you say, I instantly know what's going on with our global business. Um, if you're even a CEO, but much less a sales analyst or whoever else in the organization, you look at that and you say, okay, the squiggly one is revenue. Um, this one, I don't even know what that is. And this one's going down, which I think is a good thing, but that doesn't make any sense. And this one's red, which can't be good. Um, so we instead play, allow you to put those things in context, right? We write something that looks far more like a report. So there's text, there's pictures, there's videos, there's sound, social media embeds, whatever you need alongside those charts and graphics to contextualize them and explain what's going on. And those, uh, that text and those images can actually interact across to those graphics. So you can click on the 12% increase last year number and actually see where in the chart that's being represented and things like that. Um, so that's, that's sort of hopefully an answer to the question about where this is different from dashboarding. Um, 
I would say we're more like PowerPoint than we are like Power BI, if you're familiar with that frame of reference. Um, so the startup answer here is um, our go-to-market strategy is to basically piggyback onto existing technologies, right? Nobody ever adopts new stuff in any industry. Every, every industry likes to talk about how they try new things and, and are innovative. People always use what they're familiar with. Um, but if you can bolt onto what they're familiar with, it's like entirely a game changer. You can actually sort of slide into industries that would otherwise be unwilling to accept new technology. Uh, and then our end game here is to actually build collaboration and machine learning to be the core features, right? Right now they're the add-ons, they're the nice to have. But the end game here is for that to be what's really happening. We're not gonna automate away analysts. Analysts are always gonna be there. But we're gonna make it so the analyst job is analysis rather than spreadsheet jockeying. Um, this is a feature comparison, unless you're either a financial analyst in investment banking or super, super interested in high charts and Tableau and things like that, this is going to look kind of silly. Um, also from an investor deck, so you always put yourself on the right-hand side and you always make sure you have checks in every category, even if that makes no sense at all. You like, I think some of these might be negated in order to make having a check be a good thing. Um, <laughs> whatever. Uh, point is, we have, you know, our, our sort of core value proposition here, if you read down the side, is built into Excel, made for financial services. That one's a little bit of a reach. What we're doing is actually pretty applicable across industries, but we're made for financial services because that's where the money is today. Um, this is going to expand into other industries, or I should say that's where the unregulated money is comparatively. There's a lot of money for this in, in uh, healthcare as well, but it's even scarier regulatorily for a startup. Um, we do version control, we do interactive charts, we provide admin and management tools. This is one of those things that you don't even think about until you start selling to big companies. Then you realize that they need to know who edited the chart when, which none of the existing products basically support. Um, Web-based, so Excel is slowly moving to the web. I imagine that financial services will, companies will switch over to Office 365 sometime in the year 3000 um, because of how scared they are of the internet. But um, we're web-based today, but we, in a way that doesn't feel like it so that people are actually happy to use it. Um, and flexible styling and customizability, which is, again, it's gotta look like your brand. Gotta have the right color bird. Um, who we are, again, not the most interesting thing in the world. Uh, I'm a career technologist. I build cool software, hopefully, and sometimes really boring software, but that's interesting to build. Um, my background is in data viz. I worked on projects for really cool companies. Right now I'm working on one of the most exciting things I've ever worked on, which I can't talk about at all, which is how cool projects always work, but. Someday maybe I'll be able to tell that story um, through Windrush. Uh, and my co-founder, Riley, who is not here tonight because he is out trying to sell people things in New York City, which is what he should be doing, um, does sales and product, right? He's the guy who understands how the customers work. I just build cool stuff. I don't have to talk to customers. That's scary. Um, so this is who we are. Uh, oh, and again, pulled from an investor deck. You guys get the super secret email. So normally the emails come in tagged as like don't read from the, the like hello at Windrush email that we use on most of these slides. But this is, the, this is the email that actually goes to my inbox. So if you want to bother me, use that one. Um, that's our website. That's our Twitter handle. Please tweet about how interesting or miserably boring this presentation was uh, at us so that we can, we can feel good or bad about it. Um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions if there's time for that or just move on to the next one. Okay, okay, so then come speak to me if you want to see. I've actually had my laptop with me so I can show the actual product at some point during the nightly session if you're interested. Cool. Very cool, thanks Max.